on Fox 25. Danny Davis, the ref. About to put you in traction. All right, all right. Quiet down, girls. We've got a packed house tonight. It's standing room only. And I guarantee you won't hear any obscene language from the crowd. None of them can speak English. <laughs> Get him. Nice shot, Stinky. Who are you two? I'm Sneaky. And I'm Stinky. We came down to bring you our application to become Glow Girls. Want to make something up? So you're the ones who've been sending me those threatening letters. How'd you know? I recognize the crayon. <laughs> 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 From the Riviera Hotel in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, it's the show with more battling beauties, more amazing action, and more smiles per hour, the all-new Glow, gorgeous ladies of wrestling. We have got a humdinger of a show today, fans. The sweetheart of Hog Hollow, Nebraska, Babe, the farmer's daughter, locks up with the fire and brimstone preacher, Evangelina. The high-flying cheerleaders, Vicky Victory and Cheyenne Chair, take on the street punks from Brooklyn, Stinky and Sneaky. The Benedict Arnold of wrestling, Ninotka, battles the glow girl of the cosmos, Star. It's the avenue versus the street, as those Park Avenue knockouts, Tiffany Mellon and Roxy Asta, square off against those sexy street fighters, Hollywood and a cousin, Broadway Rose. And batten down matches for another glow face as two teams led by Mountain Fiji and Big Bad Mama collide head-on in a penalty box match. We'll be right back with all the action. I love when my fans say, Babe the Farmer's Daughter, your hair is beautiful. It attracts so much attention. Thanks to the new Fabergé Organic Shampoo and Conditioner with Pro-Vitamin B5, my hair stays healthy and strong. So if you want beautiful hair with Tammy... <laughs> People were packed so tight together, Broadway Rose accidentally picked her own pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Item, Justice recently won a dance contest by moonwalking on top of dementia. <laughs> She said it's only fitting since dementia's a lunar tick. <laughs> you know, fans, there was a lot of competition for this job. <laughs> Dr. Grove was a strong contender because of his background in newspapers. <laughs> he used to help their circulation. <laughs> someone who's built more like an asteroid. The Nutschka, now residing in Paris, France. The 
prancing pink asteroid. What is it, Star? What is it? Let Star to show me that she was unfaithful to me, Kitty, and all the girls. And I think it's time for her to pay. Did you hear that, Kanuchka? Star says it's... Oh, my God. Oh, and Ninochka takes her down with a leg drive. She sets and plows into Star with a drop kick. If she put all her weight into that one, Star would be in orbit. Hi, Glow fans. Motormouth Mike Morgan monitoring moves and maneuvers in the broadcast booth. And Ninochka's return to Glow has been taken as an insult to the grapplers, fans, and fashion designers everywhere. The Cosmic Girl slowed it down with that fist. And now she takes her over in a big monkey toss. The traitor has made herself a target by turning her back on her friends and fans. And with all that weight she's packed on, the target is as big as the side of a pink barn. The Zodiac Rappler heading up for another monkey toss. Ninotka trying to collapse her foe. A star booted her off. And the cowardly pink elephant seeks refuge outside the rope, illegally attacking her with those closed fists. Star has yet to even bend the rules while the blob began this match by striking before the opening bell. Ninotka's changed, all right, for the worst. The Parasite goes for a sunset flip, but she can't even hold the foe down for a count of one. Put your weight in for it, traitor, then you can count to 200. Fans, just compare the physiques on these two. Star is a well-conditioned, muscular athlete, and the blob, well, she looks like a balloon from Macy's Thanksgiving Parade. And to think, she once held the glow crown. The only thing she can hold now is a charter membership to Overeaters Anonymous. You hold Star up. No, the Cosmic Girl reverses and slams her down like so much trash. How the heavy have fallen. Star is gone from a peacock to a fine grappler, and the traitor has gone straight downhill. But Benedict Arnold has brought it on herself. She shunned everyone who was on her side to embrace the world of Twinkies and 31 flavors. The Zodiac Grappler breaks the leg scissors. The Pink Elephant has been unable to apply a hold for any length of time. She must be worn out from all those return trips to the buffet. Part of a new philosophy, the rules and scales were made to be broken. Whoa! Tossing the blob over her back as if she were a feather. And that feather weighs more than I do. The Cosmic Girl has really gotten it together. She's been able to handle the traitor with ease. And Inotka is a ring veteran. She says she's young, but that's in dog years. Whoa! And a slashing kick to the head from out of nowhere, down star. Miss Pigovich knew her fat was in the fire, and she had to try a desperation move. The Zodiac Grappler almost knocked out. I wouldn't be surprised if Ninotka had loaded boots. And I mean with something else besides those pig feet of hers. Whoa, a leg drop to the throat. It may be a bad forecast for Star, but the blob doesn't go for the pin. She's liable to collapse the turnbuckle if she stands on it too long. And she flips off and lands with an elbow. Sure, when her opponent is out of it, she shows off. But in the heat of the battle, she could have phoned in her performance. And the traitor manages to steal a win. But don't expect a victory party, though. She ate everything before the match. Ninochka, you're a winner. And Ninochka, I have to tell you, you look very beautiful tonight. <laughs> Johnny C displays his lack of taste and need for glasses. <laughs> You must be an expert at vaccinations. How come, Roxy? You've been needling people for years. <laughs> thicker, thicker, thicker and fuller. Body, body, body and bounce. It's the Battle Royale fans for the new Beverage Organic Now. J Organics Shampoo and Conditioner with Pro Vitamin B5. Good, good clean fun. How can people go through plastic surgery and call the result the natural look? Welcome back to Pro Vitamin B5. Introducing first from Brooklyn, New York, the New York Street Pump, 
Those two are huddling for football signals. Whoa, and Stinky and Sneaky nail share with a double drop kick, almost decapitating her in the ring rope. Now setting for a little double teaming. And Vic D Victory breaks it up with a drop kick of her own. Stinky is very particular when it comes to tag team partners. They have to be mean, aggressive, and have a poor sense of smell. Stinky met Sneaky in high school when they lived in adjoining lockers. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Stinky catches the Indian with a spinning body press. But she doesn't hook a leg, and Cheyenne kicks out. The street punk lost all the effectiveness of that move by failing to follow up. The skunk-like creature mounts the corner, but no matter how fast she moves, her smell is there a half hour earlier. Oh, and she barrels into Cheyenne's chair with that flying body press. Stinky wants to show the cheerleaders she can beat them at their own game, but that's a pretty tall order, as these two grapplers are currently unbeaten in tag team competition. Wait, Sneaky crawling along the perimeter of the ring, obviously living up to a name, and she decides to chew on Vicky Victory's leg. She's sneaky and hungry. Sticky able to batter away, the two grapplers in the ring size each other up. Stinky charges, Ali Frog, and the odorous offender gets a noggin knocker from the turnbuckle. So far, our partner has yet to make it into this match officially. Cheyenne Shear sets her up into the ropes. A duck down, and Vicky catches her with a double chop to the throat. Now that's teamwork. The cheerleaders specialize in fluidity and grace. And Stinky specializes in crudity and disgrace. Stinky tags in, Stinky charges. Oh, and she catches it with a kick right to the solar plexus. She went down as if she were shot. And air victory gets set for another flight. Whoa, a split. Sneaky, you've got graffiti all <laughs> taking over on Vicky Victory, and Sneaky holds her leg for some double teaming. Oh, crashing down on her limb, and the skunk just pushes the official away. She goes back to her dirty work. But Vicky Victory says, clean up your rack and boots her over the top rope. Oh, 
But Sneaky holds tight to that leg. Maybe she was fighting it earlier to soften it up. The two Brooklyn punks single-minded in their attack. Actually, single-minded is an overstatement. I don't think they've got a brain between them. The ref breaks up the assault, but the street girls are on her again like mustard on a Coney Island hot dog. And Sneaky goes for a finger sandwich. I guess Aunt Kitty doesn't feed a girl. Uh, of course not. She takes literally a sign that says, all you can eat. Sneaky really gnawing away on the girl from Vicksburg. She must like southern cooking. Now they're stretching her out like a rubber band, and they go back to work on a tortured limb. They don't want the cheerleader to have a leg to stand on. Sneaky's costume looks like a graffiti artist's nightmare. I haven't seen that much color in action since MTV fell into the washing machine. Sneaky on the ropes again. But Vicky says this is where you get off. The cheerleader trying to make it to her feet. <laughs> and she decides to take Sneaky off hers. Whoa, almost slingshotting her off that rope. The cheerleader sets and uses her like a gymnastics horse. Now she mounts the turnbuckle. Sneaky rises, calling Vicky victory out. And the cheerleader leaps for her. No, Sneaky yanked a leg out from under her in midair. And the girl from Vicksburg crash lands. Stinky and Sneaky know if they take a point of balance away from the cheerleaders, they can nullify their aerial attack. Hey, yo, you two cheerleaders say you got a tough competition? You ain't seen nothing yet, baby, till you step in the ring with the New York Street Punks. Stinky and Sneaky. Right, Sneaky? Where'd she go? And the cheerleader takes over on the punk. That side headlock, weakening her opponent and allowing Vicky to get her breath back. This match has been snow picnic for the victory girl. Her leg has been pounded more times than Judge Wapner's gavel. Sneaky struggling, trying to weasel out of this like she used to do with detention in high school. Vicky trying to ram her into the turnbuckle. No. The punk blocked it. And she hauls her up. Ooh, and into a spine breaker. Her tailbone may not be breakfast cereal, but it just went snap, crackle, and pop. She hauls her up into the ropes. Vicky leapfrogs out of dodge and quick tags a partner. Whoa, and she tags Sneaky with a pipe big drop kick. And she hits the canvas like a load of wet laundry. Come to think of it, in that get up, she looks like a load of wet laundry. She follows up. No, a reversal. And Sneaky flips her over the shoulder. The Indian sprawled out over the Fabergé sign on the ring. But any product related to grooming has got to be foreign to Sneaky. If you told her to put moose in the hair, she'd probably go out hunting for Bullwinkle. And her partner is even worse. The only time Stinky enjoys a day at the beach is when Toxic Waste watches ashore. Cheyenne Shea has been unable to recoup so far, but instead of moving in for the kill, Sneaky has been parading around the ring. If this one grappler doesn't get a one brain cell in gear, she's going to lose her advantage. Despite all the color, Sneaky is very dim bulb. Now she holds the Indian up. She takes her around. And into the ropes. Four a body slam. No! Chair flips out and kicks Sneaky's leg out from under her. Whoa! What a cannonball! If the street punk had any stomach muscles, they're scrambled now. Cheyenne rolls her up. But Sneaky able to power out. Both on their feet now. And the cheerleader boots her into the corner. Wow, she threw her the entire length of the ring with that monkey flip. Sneaky's back has got to be ready to put in for a vacation after that landing. She struggles up, chair locks her into an arm bar, and takes her over, scissoring the other arm, and Sneaky is trapped like a tie-dyed rat. This Stinky is punishing her own partner, whacking him with that bone. There is dissension in the ranks, and these two are about as rank as you can get. The winner is the cheerleaders. The winner is the cheerleaders. The cheerleaders. The winners. Stinky and Stinky and Stinky. So between yourselves, your winners, the cheerleaders. And we're coming back with more of the guys, the ladies of wrestling. with Godiva, giving you all the bare facts. Hi, I'm dating an archery student. Do you think he's the right man for me? Of course. As far as I'm concerned, archers are right on target. <laughs> Next caller. Yeah, baby. You know, 
You're a real shot in the arm. And you're a real pain in the neck. <laughs> Next caller. Yes, I've just broken up with a dry cleaner. Do you think he'll make any trouble for me? No, dry cleaners aren't known to air their dirty linen in public. <laughs> That's all for now, love. Talk to you soon. In just, in just a minute, you're going to hear all about a police... and trying to make Babe repent for it. She catches her in a farmer's carry, and here comes the sermon. If Moses ever heard Evangelina, there'd be another commandment. Thou shalt not run thy mouth. Oh, slamming her into the mat. Now, declaring the farmer's daughter to be a sinner. Come on, Evangelina. Let she who is without sin cast the first stone. Your past is about as spotty as a convention of weapons. I know for a fact Babe attended church regularly back in Hog Hollow. She went every Saturday to beat the rush. She hurls her to the corner and starts a choking assault, furiously massaging her throat. The ref calls for the break. Evangelina goes right back to her attack. She is driven, or she should be, driven away. And the fanatic throws herself on the mercy of the ref. But Babe just throws her down. Beautiful, big splash. But the preacher, able to power out, she's breathing fire and brimstone. You know, lots of friends of mine have lost a lot of money to people like Evangeline. So during this match, I'm going to make her pay. Babe, hoping for a little retribution, Evangelina says charity begins at home, and that's where she keeps all the donations. Father Louie crawls over her and flies like an angel with a perfect body press. The farmer's daughter is in seventh heaven. The winner of the match, Babe, the farmer's daughter! Waitress! Oh, waitress! Yeah! What do you want? Listen, stupid! These eggs aren't even squibbled! Up to no good. Hey, babe, the farmer's daughter, this stuff is way good. Faber's Organic Shampoo. Of course, Wimp. Well, I use it too. What's that? It's the new Faber's Organic easy to use dispenser with pro vitamin B5. <laughs> hey. Yeah? Ah, uh, this stuff's too good to hit you with. Well, I always have a supply of the new Faber's Organic Shampoo and Conditioner. So should you. Hollywood, not stop that, Hollywood. Once again, foolish friends, Freddy Krueger is on your phone. Welcome back to Glow! Guys, the ladies of wrestling! Best as a tag team spectacular! First, from New York City and Los Angeles, respectively, the East-West Coast Connection, Broadway Road!
distracting them and Broadway Rose scoops off with their purses I can't believe Tiffany and Archie would be foolish enough to leave those bags unguarded like that and the sweet girls get ready to count their loot doesn't take kindly to that prank. They charge their opponents. Poe, still smarting from the joke, tries to make the golden girl pay with pain. She sets her up and grinds her foot into a forehead. This match has been billed as the avenue versus the street, and Tiffany tells her to hit the road all together. Tiffany may look like a bit of fluff, but don't be fooled. The giggly gruffler knows how to fight. Ask anybody she shops with. as Broadway Rose shopping for a new head. After that clothesline, Tiffany's a lioness in gold lame, and she knows the world of culture. After all, she's been thrown out of the finest finishing schools. And now Broadway Rose throws her for a loop with that arm drag. Both she and her cousin Hollywood would like nothing better than to notch a win here and prove the sweet girl's superiority over the avenue dwellers. And Broadway Rose has been attacking like a cave dweller, stomping and choking. The sweet girl can get down and dirty. Rose breaking just before being disqualified. Now having some words for the ref that certainly weren't happy birthday. She goes back after a fray, holding her tight with a handful of hair. Tiffany's locks are off in the target. Now if Rose uses any spray in her hair, it's probably Raid. Whoa, the Park Avenue pulverizer knocks Broadway Rose into the ropes, and Tiffany completes the job, forcing her over and onto the arena floor. The Golden Girl, happy with this turn of events. And Rose looks for the exit ramp. She tags her cousin outside. Not a legal move, but the only time these girls ever used a rule hook was to smack somebody in the head with it. The street fighters have been on the receiving end so far in this one, and in terms of punishment, it's always better to give than to receive. Tiffany, setting for a splash. Whoa, but there's nobody home. Hollywood able to roll away, and the knockout almost gets knocked out. Now drops kicking her into the corner. Roxy wanting to tag in, and Hollywood trying to break it up. The tag is made, and the knockout leaps in, and the street gal welcomes her with open arms for a double arm drag. Roxy taken by surprise. The Californian going for an arm lock, trying to wear her bow down, really working the hose. Roxy hasn't felt this much pressure since the time all the credit card payments came due on the same day. Into the ropes, and a rolling tackle takes her down. Tiffany and Roxy, you better watch out for Broadway and I. It's going to be the street girls against the Avenue girls. And we're going to run you down. Roxy able to escape that surfboard hole. These two teams have been giving it all they've got. And if this match wasn't actually enough, we've got an incredible penalty box match coming up next. And next week, the run for the Rubies returns with a vengeance. As these two grapplers, Hollywood and Roxy, square off in an elimination bout. Maybe that's why they're punishing each other so much right now. An injury here would give a wrestler the upper hand next week. Bo and Roxy caught her in a sunset flip, but Broadway Rose breaks it up. Tiffany comes in to even the odds, but Hollywood decks her with a double arm drag. The street girls taking over on the knockouts now. And Aunt Kitty distracts the referee to give the girls the chance to cash in on the momentum. The only time Aunt Kitty ever builds up momentum is with a knife and fork in the hand. 
You can bet any beating taken in this match will be carried over into next week's Hollywood and Roxy clash. Also meeting in the run for the Ruby Spouts will be Zelda the Brain and MTV and Beastie and the Superhero Lightning. That's all next week on Glow. Hollywood and Broadway roads kicking away. They know how painful that rowboat can be. But Tiffany and Roxy will not be denied. And they put the rowboat on the street girl, stretching their hamstrings, their muscles stinging in pain. <laughs> Seeing Hollywood and Broadway rows in the ring makes me think that somebody forgot to take out the trash. <laughs> Tiffany and Hollywood grapple on the arena floor. You knew it was only a matter of time before the ring became too small to contain this one. Rose trying to perform a little premature plastic surgery breaking her face like a pile of autumn leaves. Now, hauling her up into the ropes. Oh, a vicious knee doubles her over. The street girl pounding her midsection. And she takes her down with a head scissor. Broadway Rose and Hollywood know all the classic wrestling maneuvers, but Aunt Kitty would rather have them punch, kick, and gouge. In her book, Peter's always possible. Tiffany trying to keep Hollywood from getting back to the ring. The knockouts believing they can divide and conquer the street girls. And conquer is the right word because this one has been a war from the opening bell. The two of them grapple near exhaustion. Rose for Al Foxy and snap nails her down. Stepping up the attack. She drags the knockout up, setting her up for another mare. No, the Park Avenue go blocks it. She locks up Broadway's arms and pulls her into a backslide pin. And the Avenue gets the Duke over the street. Roxy and Tiffany have the bragging rights of the boulevard over the Hollywood and Broadway roads. Fabergé Organics. Sure, with our money, we can afford anything. But why spend a million? Totally look like a million. And who says money can't buy everything? Oh, Roxy, that's rich. So is Fabergé, Tiff. <laughs> Don't be a fool, fool. Use Fabergé. Your mama knows best. The gorgeous ladies of wrestling are back on your telephone out of the ring and into your hearts. Call the GLOW hotline now. 1-900-860-WILD. These lovely ladies will give you the other side of the action. Up close and wild. Call now and get to know your favorite GLOW girl. And keep in touch. $2 the first minute, $1 each additional minute. Children, get your parents permission before you dial. He's been called everything from Captain Outrageous to the mouth of the South. And now, Ted Turner's getting into the wrestling ring. And Entertainment Tonight's got the inside story. It's a real grudge match between the two of us, but we're still in the ring. Can his upstart lead hold its own against Hulks and Giants, or will wrestling's big boys take Turner to the mat? We've got a long way to go, just like with the Braves, to get them back uh, on top. Get the inside story on the next Entertainment Tonight. Monday at 7 on Fox 25. Rugs and needles. Team 
number two, Captain by Mountain Fiji, South of the Plains, Justice and Daisy. That's right, fans. Daisy, Daisy, now free of Remlina, has volunteered to help Mountain Fiji in her crusade against rule breakers. <laughs> you know, with Fiji, Daisy, and Justice on one team, Zelda the Brain is almost lost in the crowd.
escaping the penalty box and attacking Mountain Fiji. Justice corralling dementia to prevent a two-on-one attack. And BC has run a month. She's tearing the penalty box apart. I knew she was built like a record ball, but now she's thinking like one too. Thank you. 